invite you to the book of Exodus. It's going to be in Exodus 3 and 4, and then in uh, Exodus 33 and 34. And we're dealing with two times God reveals himself in the book of Exodus to Moses and how this is a good, merciful, and gracious thing for God to do for us. Let's begin, though, with a word of prayer. Father, we come to you and we thank you that you are merciful and gracious. We thank you that in times of need, in times of calling, you are available. You do reveal yourself to us. And what you reveal about yourself is, is not all your great power, but your mercy and your grace. Lord, help us to see you today, to trust in you above all else, to love you with all we are. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Book of Exodus, of course, we've been going through the whole Old Testament and of the entire book, probably these two passages are uh, some of the most signature of the entire book. Oftentimes we'll, we'll think of uh, some of the things we covered last week with the plagues or even uh, the golden calf incident. But in all these things, probably nowhere more aptly do we see God specifically reveal himself. I was thinking about how in the dark, as you sit there and the heart monitor beeps, or maybe you're in the car and you've just been laid off, or you're sitting there in the pew and hear the calling of God, in all three instances, our hearts often cry out, God, I need to see you. I need to know that you're with me. In fact, in Exodus 33 and 34, as we'll see today, Moses was in that situation. He's just come back from bringing the original Ten Commandments. He finds the children of Israel worshiping the golden calf. God judges, and God is even ready to completely wipe out Israel and begin again with Moses. Of course, I doubt Moses' wife is too thrilled with this idea. And Moses' response is, I can't do this alone, God. I need you to go with me. I need to know who you are. And God, in mercy and grace, reveals himself. In all the times that we need him, God does reveal himself. The problem is sometimes we don't see him. Sometimes we fail to notice him there. So come with me as we look at these verses and see how God reveals himself. The first way that we see in these verses in chapter 3 and 4 and then 33 and 34 that God reveals himself is that God in mercy and grace reveals himself to unworthy people. Last week we covered how Moses is providentially rescued from Pharaoh's decree that all male children should die. His mother technically follows the letter of the law. Moses ends up in the Nile, but in a basket. And God works to have Moses adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. But Moses, in many ways, is nothing special. Moses himself knows how unworthy he is. Notice here in verses 11 and 12 of Exodus chapter 3, Moses, in response to God, as God calls him from the burning bush, but Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? This is the same man who grew up in Pharaoh's house. 
trained in statesmanship and administration, and now as a sheep herder for his father-in-law, he understands he's nothing special. He's not worthy of this calling by God, and yet God still calls him. Here's God's response in verse 12. God said, he said, but I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people of e- out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Moses, you want to know, even though you're unworthy, that I'm with you. I'm going to bring you to this spot. I'm going to bring you here, even though you realize you're nothing special. You, in fact, Moses talks about how he is slow to speak. He doesn't speak well. You can almost imagine that probably growing up, Moses had some speech classes, learned to speak to other heads of state. And yet Moses here realizes he's nothing special. He's unworthy of God's call. And yet God himself in mercy, in grace, chooses to reveal himself to Moses. Moses, who's murdered an Egyptian, Moses, who's been thrown out of the country, now sees God. God, in mercy and grace, reveals himself to unworthy people. To people like Moses, we often think of Moses as this great man who led the people of Israel out, and that's true but he only did so because God was with him, because he saw God. God in mercy and grace also reveals himself to call unready people. If God had to wait for us to be ready, he would never be able to use any of us. Consider in the New Testament of Peter. Peter's not ready. Three years of following Christ, and he's still not ready. In fact, even after preaching at Pentecost, he's still not ready. And God has to tell him, don't call unclean what I've made clean. Moses is not ready. With all the training he's had, with all the experience in Pharaoh's court he's had, with with learning now for years at the help and hand of his father-in-law to lead sheep. Moses is not ready. God in mercy and grace reveals himself to call unready people. Chapter 4, verse 10. But God said to Mo- Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. I can't talk, God. Why do you want to call me out to to go get Israel? I, I can't speak, God. He's not ready. But the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seen or blind? Is it not I, the Lord. Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. Moses said, O my Lord, please send someone else. Isn't this our typical response? We're not ready for God to call us to something, to call us out of sin even. We're not ready to go through the experience to sit there in the hospital and hear the monitor beep. We're not ready to be laid off. We're not ready to be called into service. Lord, please send someone else. Isn't an I who makes man's mouth? Isn't an I, the Lord, your God? This is a good and gracious and merciful thing that God is calling unready people. God, in mercy and grace, reveals himself to call unready people. God, in mercy and grace, reveals himself personally 
to unholy people. Back in chapter 3, Moses is coming and he sees the bush. Verse 3 says, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. I think it would get us attention, our attention if we walked out uh, into our, our desert here in onto the mountain and, and saw a bush on fire but not being consumed. And that is what Moses sees. And he turns aside. And in chapter 3 and verse 5, God says to Moses, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you're standing is holy ground. There is a concept within the law of God that something unholy does not, uh, is not cleansed by touching something that's holy. Rather, something that is holy that is touched by something unholy is made unclean. If the priest drops the instrument at the uh, one of the instruments when he's at the altar, now it's unclean. Now it can't be used. It has to go and be purified to be reused again at the altar. If a priest touches his wife during her time of the month, he's now unclean and has to be purified along with his wife. Moses, don't keep coming. Take off your sandals. Why? Because it's holy ground, because the presence of God is there. In verses 14 and 15, when, God, when Moses is there at the bush, he asks God, who is it that should I should say is sending me? This is God's response. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say to this people of Israel, I am has sent you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. Moses comes up and God says, Take off your sandals, it's holy, because I'm here. But it's not just the holy God. He's also revealing himself what? Personally. Who are you, God? Well, I am the God that was the personal God of Abraham. I am the God that is, was the personal God of Isaac. I am the God that was the personal God of Jacob. But I am. You want to know who I am? I am. think it's helpful for us when we are in situations where our response is God picks somebody else to remember who he is, that he is personally, he is the I am. That out of who he is comes mercy and grace. Is he holy? Yes. Are we unholy? Moses, stop where you are so I don't strike you down. But did Moses meet God personally? Moses met the I am even though he was unholy. Isn't that true for all of us? Isn't that true for how all of us come to know God? All of us are unholy like Moses and all of us must meet him personally. Paul, on the road to Damascus, though he thought himself righteous of his own works, was unholy. And only when he finally personally meets God does his life change. It is God in his mercy, his grace, that he reveals himself personally to unholy people who do not deserve it. None of us deserve to know the I am. We've all sinned by nature and by choice. We've all fallen short of his glory. And yet, just like to Moses here, 
Even though he's holy, he still reveals himself as the I am. I am the Lord your God. In Exodus chapter 33, we find that God in mercy and grace reveals himself in his glory to wavering people. In Exodus 33, we have Moses, after he's gone up the mountain once for tablets, he's come down, found the children of Israel worshiping a calf, breaking the first several commandments. He throws them down in frustration. He's frustrated. God judges. And somewhere along the line, Moses realizes it's about to get real. God has just said, I'm going to destroy Israel and start again with you, Moses. Moses intercedes. And then when he goes back up the mountain to receive the tablets again, Moses is at the end of his rope. I can't do this alone, God. Moses is wavering. Moses is in the middle of the situation where he doesn't know what to do. Moses realizes he's at the end of his own personal strength, his own endurance to deal with these people. God, in his mercy and grace, reveals himself in his glory to wavering people. In Exodus 33, 15, uh, 33, 13 to 15, Moses asking God, Now, therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways, that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And he, the Lord, said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And Moses said to the Lord, If your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. I don't know if you've ever been in the sandals of Moses. God, if you don't go with me, just kill me now. Just leave me here and let me rot. God, if you don't go with me, I can't do it. God, if you don't go with me, I can't endure. God here is revealing himself in his glory to wavering people. Moses is ready to throw in the towel. Moses is ready just to walk away. Leave those stinking children of Israel there at the base of the mountain. I'm walking off. God, if you don't go with me, if I don't know who you are, if I can't find favor in your sight, just leave me here to rot. What did God tell him? My presence will go with you. In fact, the words here for presence is used in other places, including uh, just after this with the tabernacle, when the presence of the Lord comes and fills the tabernacle. In the book uh, of Kings, when the presence of the Lord comes and fills the temple so it even drives out the priests, it's the same word here. My glory, my glorious presence will go with you. Moses is wavering, and God in mercy and grace reveals himself in his glory, in his wonder, in his splendor, to wavering Moses. Because God in mercy and grace reveals in his glory to wavering people. Finally, God reveals, him, it reveals he is merciful and gracious. It's not enough just to know the power of God. It's not just enough to know the holiness of God. God is powerful. God is supremely holy. But God, it is necessary for us to know that He is merciful and gracious. 
In Exodus 33, 17 to 23, and then 34, God reveals who he is at his core. In our scripture reading, we find Jesus doing the same thing in the New Testament, that he is lowly and gentle. Here, God says, the most important thing about me is, I am merciful and gracious. All the things God could reveal. This is most important. Chapter 33, verse 17, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken I will do for you, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. And Moses said, Please show me your glory. I need to know you're a big God. I need to know that you're capable of of taking care of these snotty Israelites. What does God respond? And he, God, said, I will make all my, not glory, not power, I'll make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But you, he said, you cannot see my face for man shall not see me and live. The Lord said, behold, there's a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. God protects Moses as he passes by because no man can see God and live. When Moses asks, I need to see the bigness of God. Moses, I'm going to show you all my goodness. Not only am I going to do that, but I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm the Lord. I'm merciful and gracious. I will show mercy to those who I will show mercy. I will show grace to those who I will show grace. In chapter 34, the beginning of chapter 34, verses 5 through 9, we see a repeat as God, as the events unfold, as God shows himself to Moses. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there. Imagine standing on a rock in the presence of God physically coming and standing next to you. And there God proclaimed the name of the Lord. What did he proclaim? The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, what? A God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generations. What's the response? And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, please let the Lord go in the midst of us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. How can Moses ask such a thing? God, forgive us. Pardon our sin. Because God has just said what? The Lord, God merciful and gracious having loving kindness and steadfast love for a thousand generations. If you get nothing else, if you get nothing else from the Old Testament, if you get nothing else from Exodus, 
if you get nothing else from today, know that God is merciful and gracious. It's who he is at his core. That's why he is steadfast and loving for a thousand generations. That's why he only visits the sin of a man upon the third and fourth generation. And even then, other passages tell us that repentance removes that. That's why God, because he is merciful and gracious, can pardon a stiff neck and iniquitous people. That's why God can pardon even someone like Moses who uses every excuse he can think of and a few more of his imagination to try and get out of what God's called him to do. What should it cause us to do? The same thing that Moses is doing. Moses bowed his head and worshipped. Why? Because God reveals he is merciful and gracious. This is who he is. Is he the judge? Yes. Is he high and lifted up? Most assuredly. But he is merciful. He is gracious. Pardoning even our iniquities. And he is merciful and gracious, revealing himself to unworthy people. To we who are unready to experience his call. To unholy people, he shows us himself personally. Even as we waver in our faith and our trust, when, when that monitor is beeping, when the job is gone, when the call places requirements upon our lives that we have no idea how it's going to work, God reveals himself. That he is merciful and gracious. To us, then, the question comes, do you, do I believe God when he says he is merciful and gracious? Do you believe that he will forgive your sins if, he, if you ask? In 1 John, God tells us he will forgive. He is merciful and gracious and he is faithful to forgive and he is just in doing so. Do you believe him? Or do all you see is the judgment of God? Both the coming judgment and some that you've experienced in your own life. Do you see him as separated from you? Or do you believe him when he says, I'm merciful and gracious and I will forgive? What are some of those times in your life when you've seen God, especially when he's been merciful and gracious to you? Maybe it was a time when you should have met him face to face in death. Maybe it was a time when sitting beside the bedside of a loved one. Maybe it was a time when you were sitting there and now your, your financial future it has evaporated. Maybe it was a time when he's called you to do something and you think it impossible. Have you seen God when he's been merciful and gracious? Really, simply, have you seen God? Or is he still this abstract, unknown to you? You can know him today. You can know his mercy and grace today. You can know all the wonder of his forgiveness you can know his mighty power, his ability to save. You can know him personally. You don't have to go up the mountain, find a bush, set it on fire, and hope God shows up. 
You have to go and try and cement yourself into a rock and hope God passes by. God has said, if you seek me, you shall find me. If you search with all your heart. God is ready and willing and ready to reveal himself to you and most specifically to show you he's merciful and gracious. That he will give you what you do not deserve, the forgiveness of your sins. And he will give you mercy. He will not give you what you deserve, the punishment for your sins. Even giving you a relationship with himself. Have you seen God? He's calling to you. Hopefully it doesn't take as long as it took for Moses. God's calling to you today. What is your response? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you that even in the life of Moses, we see how merciful and gracious you are. A Moses, who didn't deserve it, was shown your mercy and grace, was called to work for you, was shown who you are, the eternal God, the I Am. Not just in power, but in loving kindness that goes to thousands of generations the mercy and grace even on stiff-necked and rebellious and iniquitous people. Thank you for showing us yourself today. Lord, I pray for any who have heard your word today, who do not know your mercy and grace, who are running from it, who are trying to earn it, who are looking for it in all the wrong places, Lord, that they would accept your mercy and grace today that you give to them freely through Jesus Christ. They would know you and your love for them. I pray today in Jesus' name, amen.